So hello students, today uh, we are going to cover miscellaneous agents. So uh, let me start with the topic, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. So yes, starting with miscellaneous agents. So these are basically the inorganic compounds which will be responsible for some activity. So what are those in, uh, inorganic compounds? What are the uses of those? How assays are done to check the purity of those compounds? We will look into that basically. Okay, so starting with miscellaneous compounds, the compounds category that we are going to cover are expectorants, emetics, hematinics, poison and antidote, and astringent. So these are the types of compounds that we are going to cover under the topic of miscellaneous agents. Okay, so starting with the expectorants. So what are basically expectorants? Expectorants are something which helps to remove a sputum from the respiratory tract or secondly, it will help, uh, uh, it can be a stomach irritant by stimulation of gastric reflexes. So these is, this is the basic idea of what expectorants are, like helping removing the sputum from the respiratory tract and then uh, have, or, or having an uh, stimulation of, or the gastric reflexes, okay. So inorganic expectorants can, are the ammonium chloride, and potassium iodide. Uh, there are many more, but we will focus on this. Uh, we will look into their assay. We will look into their uses. Uh, we will look into their properties. How are they in nature, etc. So in classifying expectorants, there are two types of expectorants. One is sedative expectorant and stimulant expectorant. Okay. So sedative are ones that uh, which acts like a stomach irritant expectorant by stimulation of gastric reflexes that I said. And secondly, it is the stimulant expectorants. Uh, stimulant expectorants are the one which helps the uh, secretory cells uh, start stimulation. So that is uh, from the respiratory tract. That, that is, it helps in removing your sputum. Okay, so that is all idea about expectorants. So now looking into their compounds, starting with ammonium chloride with molecular weight of 53.49. Ammonium chloride uh, molecular weight is 53.49. And uh, what can be its formula? It's NH4HCl. NH4HCl, it's ammonium chloride formula. Okay, so uh, we will look into its preparation. Yes, looking into its preparation, it is uh, prepared by three, uh, very three basic uh, reactions like uh, just by neutralizing ammonia with HCl, what you get is ammonium chloride. Uh, secondly, uh, treating ammonical gas liquors with lime and liberated ammonia is passed through the HCl, what we get is a crystalline mass of ammonium chloride. Okay. Thirdly, it is by heating ammonium sulfate with NaCl, what we get is NH3 and HCl, and then again a neutralization reaction, and what we get is NH4Cl, that is our ammonium chloride. Okay, moving to next, the properties of ammonium chloride, this is basically how ammonium chloride looks like. Uh, it is a fine white crystalline powder, odorless, carries a cooling saline taste, and then it is slightly hygroscopic. It is soluble in water and uh, alcohol. Okay. So uh, freshly prepared aqueous solutions are neutral, but becomes acidic on standing. This is one property of ammonium chloride. Okay. One more chemical reaction of ammonium chloride is when ammonium chloride reacted with water, what we get is ammonium hydroxide. Okay. Then assay of the same, ammonium chloride. So ammonium chloride assay is assayed by two methods. That is one by Wolhard method. Second is indirect assay method. Okay. So here the sample is dissolved in water and titrate and it is neutralized with the formaldehyde solution in which we get methylene imine. Uh, uh, and it polymerizes to hexamine. Okay, 
So this results in quantitative liberation of HCl equivalent to NH4Cl. So the liberated HCl is titrated with the standard solution of NaOH using phenolphthalein as your indicator, which gives the final endpoint as pale pink color, uh, which is indication okay, that it, your solution has been neutralized and the assay has been achieved. Okay. So this is basically the reaction which takes place during the assay and the type of assay is acid-based titration method. Okay. And then secondly, assay can be done of ammonium chloride by Wolhard's method. Okay. Uh, in that, uh, it basically acidifies with nitric acid uh, with volume of silver nitrate, nitrobenzene, etc. So this is what Wolhard method's basic uh, ground is. Like these are few reagents which are, which are required when the assay is be done by Wolhard method. Okay, so this is the basic reaction NH4Cl uh, with AgNO3. What we get is NH4NO3 uh, plus AgCl, which determines the purity of ammonium chloride. Then uses. So uses of ammonium chloride is maintaining acid-base equilibrium. It is expectorant, of course. Then it has a diuretic effect. And then we come to the precautions where the storage is in highly closed containers and its incompatibilities is with alkali, uh, carbonates of alkali earths and silver and lead salts. So next is potassium chlorides under the same section of expectorants. Okay. So this is basically the preparation of potassium chloride, potassium iodide, potassium iodide with molecular weight of 166 and with the formula of Ki, okay, potassium iodide. Then uh, this is basically the preparation of potassium iodide. Okay. In which, uh, in which basically a moist iron filings, um, which gives uh, ferroferric iodide and on decomposition with potassium carbonate, we get potassium iodide. Secondly, uh, with potassium hydroxide and iodine, what we get is potassium iodide. So it is a white granular powder, odorless, like you have seen here. Okay and carry saline to bitter taste, soluble in water, alcohol, and identification with, uh, so there are certain reactions which are characteristic to potassium and iodine. So these are the same for identification of type of criteria in which you can know that potassium iodide is present in a compound. So these are the uses. It is used for treatment of thyroid deficiency, it is used as an expectorant, diuretic, etc. Then storage is well closed containers, and these are the incompatibilities of KI. Then the emetics. Emetics. In emetics, these are the compounds which uh, gives rise to force regurgitation, which is also known as emetic, emesis, okay, a forced vomiting effect. Okay. By which contents of the stomach get expelled. Okay, so for what reason this can be used? Emetics. Yes, for emetics we need uh, we need emetics for treatment of poisoning cases. So emetics compounds, emetics in organic compounds are copper sulfate, uh, sodium, potassium, tartrate. So copper sulfate is basically a very nice blue color, CuSO4, okay. Then a preparation, it is by roasting Cu with sulfide ore that which gives you copper sulfate. Then um, mixture of CuSO4 with CuO, it gives you the resulting solution. What you get is a crystalline mass of copper sulfate. So this is the uh, assay. Assay uh, principle is based on instability of CuI2, which is this. Because of this instability, what you what you achieve is the assay of uh, copper sulfate. Okay. Then, then because of that, what you get is cuprous iodide and iodine. 
आयोडीन ऑन रिएक्शन विद सोडियम थायोसल्फेट गेट्स यू सोडियम टेक्ट्राथायोनेट एंड सोडियम आयोडाइड एंड क्यूप्रस ऑक्साइड आयोडाइड which we have got from here on reaction with potassium thiocyanate what we get is cuprous thiocyanate and potassium iodide so its use is in emetic in a dose of range of till 300 mg in 30 ml water chemical antidote in phosphorus poisoning astringent and also a fungicide ingredient in benetex and felling reagent and storage has to be protected from air heat and moisture so this is basically what is phosphorus poisoning causing the liver and other organs is basically this yellowish color on the organs so antidote like a um, copper sulfate when given can give you a uh, a uh, anti poisoning type of effect antidote effect so and these are the uh, what i have mentioned that it is a ingredient of benetics and felling's reagent so these are basically the solutions of the same okay then second compound in under emetics was sodium potassium tartrate also known as rochelle salt okay uh action of tartric acid with nacl and kcl what you get is sodium potassium tartrate it is a white crystalline powder odorless saline in test and is effervescent in air talking about the chemical properties uh sodium potassium tartrate when reacted with oxygen what you get is k2co3 that is your potassium carbonate and carbon dioxide and water and uses it is saline cathartic mild laxative diuretic and urinary alkalizer etc next is hematinics just giving an idea about hematinics so these are the agents which increase blood cells formation okay uh, so therefore it can be used in the treatment of anemia okay so the main hematinics that we can consider is uh, fe iron vitamin b10 and folate ions so so these agents basically increase the number of erythrocytes and hemoglobin okay so ferrous sulfate which is an ion that we have um, covered here and ferrous gluconate are the compounds that we are at the inorganic compounds that we are going to cover under hematinics so uh, this was the first part second part will be delete soon thank you